these on or what? Check. We need a cozy. Oh, okay. We need everyone ready for a hug. Act like you love each I other. I really need a hug, man. You want some water? I don't know. I think that's all I'm going to be good for tonight. As far as this panel is concerned. Give yourselves another round of applause. Uh, we starting? This the thing? Check. <laughs> How about like a real intro? Give me like a fighter intro. You do it. No, I want like a fighter intro. What's I want a, what's like from from what from Boston, Massachusetts, in this corner, blah blah blah. I want like a Boston, fucking Boston, Massachusetts. So, like, so now I'm Michael Buffer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's what I brought you. Presenting the baddest Coming motherfucker this Sunday, on the planet. Sunday, Sunday, Jeffrey Williams. <laughs> Hi. Do whatever. Hi. Hi. Okay. We have we have no plan. Nope. At all. <laughs> That's why yeah, this is this so is, fun. We've never been so like completely unprepared for a panel in the past. We like had all these ideas and plans, but instead we're playing a concert tomorrow night. So, all que So all questions will be in the form of, as far as your concert tomorrow night goes. Um, <laughs> so we really hope you'll come out because we've really like worked super hard and we've put together. Um, all right, let me start better. Tomorrow night, we're going to do a concert over at the ACL Live Moody Theater. It's really close by. It's like three blocks. It's connected to the W Hotel. This is like a, I mean, this, this venue is, um, I mean, Austin Sea Limits, you, you might not know you all, but like Austin Sea Limits is, is this um, PBS TV show that's been on since like the 70s, I'd say, mm -hmm. late 70s, I think. And um, it's a live performance show, you know? It's a concert show. Um, and it's legendary. And the venue itself is, is legendary. And the performances that have been given on uh, Austin City Limits by, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan, like, that was something that really, like, launched Stevie Ray Vaughan into a much bigger kind of level of his career, you know? Um, so it's a super legendary venue. And just the words Austin City Limits alone are, like, Eey, like scary things for like guitar players and musicians because it's like hallowed territory, like it really is. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, it's like crazy thing to, to be playing there. It's a super world-class venue. It's really, really beautiful. It holds around 2,500, 2,700 people. The furthest seat from the stage is 75 feet away. So it's every seat in there is like incredible. It's beautiful. The sound is incredible. It's all good. I feel like Donald Trump up here. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna. But anyway, um, I don't feel like that at all. Um, <laughs> so um, there's one little tidbit that we have for you. So um, we hope you come to the concert. We worked really hard to put it together. The band is awesome. Um, killing musicians. We're going to have 17 people on stage. A nice big string section. We have, oh, did you meet Casey Williams? Microphone? Oh, you oh. Hi. How are we, how we doing? Casey sings a little bit in, around the house, uh, and I put microphones up so I capture her randomly singing and turn it into uh, songs for TV shows. Like, so. Yeah, we should we should introduce everyone. At the oh yeah 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 yeah. I, I am so I'm sorry. I haven't slept. <laughs> So that's Casey Williams, and she's a singer, and she works on stuff that we do. And, uh, and this is Lamar Hall, and he's been with uh, me doing music for a long uh, time. <laughs> and as awesome as you might think he is, he's actually a thousand times more awesome than that. And he's like one of my best friends and one of the best people ever. And... Um, I write you a love note here. He is awesome. I love that they give you pads so you can be like all Stephen Colbert up here. Like, uh -huh. Check this out. When, when you have a friend that can uh, 
do something like make dreams come true, they've done their job. Let's just put it that way. So there's that. And uh, now we have Alex Abraham. Now, oh, Thanks, folks. It's nice to be here. Uh, man, this guy just, every style of music Alex works on is just like great. Like, I'm still waiting to find something that I can ask Alex to do that, like, he doesn't really do, like, fucking better than me, which is, like, kind of pisses me off. But, um, Probably bluegrass. Uh, what? Probably. We haven't tried bluegrass yet. Oh, you'll do it better than me, because I'm horrible at that. Um, and knowing Chibi, we might be able to get away with something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Ruby Chibi. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was like a dream come true, yeah. being able to take like these like super serious, like overly serious songs with like, bruh, and then be like, tink, 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 <laughs> from shadow, tink, 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 yeah, Bye-ya. yeah, that was cool, that's cool, that's fun. Um, uh, so yeah, um, Alex has been working on Ruby since um, the beginning, and um, mostly. Um, um, writing amazing instrumental music, and maybe we'll have some songs and stuff too from Alex at some point. But Alex helps me by like taking some of the weight off my shoulders when the shows get longer and they want music from the beginning at the end of the show. And I'm like, Alex, I can't do it all. I'm trying to write a new song with Casey. So Alex saves me over and over and over again. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> Alex is gonna play. Alex is playing with us tomorrow night. What? Alex is a great guitar player and a great singer, and he's playing with us tomorrow night, too. So everyone here is performing tomorrow night. So, yeah, Alex is awesome. Thank you, Alex. Jeff, you are, you are far too kind. And now, um, so wait, this is Adrian Cowan. You haven't met Adrian yet, but this is Adrian. Hi, Adrian. So uh, I teach a little bit at Berkeley College of Music, and uh, through some mutual friends, I ended up meeting Adrian. And Adrian's like, I hate to keep saying the same thing, because I'm sure that Adrian could probably sing all kinds of styles of music really, really well. But Adrian is this incredible rock and metal singer, and she just... Yeah. Like, 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 Adrian doesn't wear stage clothes. She just happens to walk onto a stage... Like, she, it's just like, it's always what she's doing. She's so into her craft and um, just really thrilled that we've been able to hang out with her and meet her. So she's going to sing tomorrow night. So we have Adrian, And then we also have another really wonderful female singer who is, her name is Lydia Harrell. Harrell? Harrell. 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 All right, Harrell. Lydia Harrell. So Lydia's actually Casey's vocal teacher. And she's a really incredible jazz singer, soul singer, R&B singer. So... We kind of have this like really broad range of, of, of tones and talent and skill. Um, so we're super psyched about it. And we have our friends for Dairy String Quartet, who've been doing a bunch of stuff with us for years. And, you know, they, they kind of regularly... Has their EP been announced? What? Has their EP been announced? Oh, well, it is now. So they're putting out a, 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 um, an EP of... Um, Recordings of arrangements of Ruby music. And um, they have it this weekend, right? I'm pretty sure the EP covers the four trailers. Cool. Got it. Yeah. All right, so they have a... What? Someone oh, you got it. Oh, all right. He says Beautiful. it's at their booth. So Videri has a booth down on the floor, and they have their EP of Ruby covers, and their artwork's really beautiful. It's not really cool. And uh, check it out. So they're going to do an opening set tomorrow night. So doors are going to open at 6.30, and uh, uh, they're going to play at 8, and they'll probably play for 45 minutes, you know? And uh, they do all this great game music. Like, they just, they just go around to all the cons, and um, they're just awesome. Um, and then we'll play starting at 8 o'clock. So the tickets are on sale, and if you go to acl-live.com, you can buy them there. But listen, maybe you went to the Ruby panel earlier today. Yeah. We couldn't go to that because we were rehearsing. Um, but, um, yeah, they probably already told you. So we get a discount code for you guys. So if you go on there and you go discount code and you type in Ruby panel, one word, R-W-B-Y panel, 
then we get a pretty good discount. It's like 30% or something like that. So, yep. That's what's up. So I really hope you'll come. It would be awesome to see all you same folks tomorrow night because we're going to, like, rock the fucking place, like, super fucking hard. Yeah, like, super hard. We're from Boston. We don't live down here in Austin. We're from, yeah, we're hardcore from Boston, so we're going to rock it. So anyway, uh, what do you want to talk about? Um, Adrian, tell us about the super group you just joined. Yeah. Adrian just joined this like super group yeah, of like that. these like pretty serious Cats metal dudes from like Europe. I don't really know them because I'm not in quite that scene. But tell us about it a little bit. Okay, this is not related to this at all. No, it's not. But Adrian's awesome. So here we go. And I have no plan. So this is it. <laughs> If anyone here is a fan of a band called Rhapsody, I'm now in a band with their drummer, Alex Landenberg, and also, um, yeah, power metal, <laughs> the metal, right? The metal people are over there. Nobody yeah. knew about yeah, oh, there, right. metal dude from before. I think it was. <laughs> when we shouted out rock, he's like, yeah! When we shout out metal, he's like, yeah! That's the best kind of, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> he does that at every panel. <laughs> anyway, the band is called Light and Shade, and um, I guess there are other metal people here, so let's all be friends. <laughs> Um, do you want to talk about Chibi? Do you want to talk about some of the... I don't know, Chibi. What's to say? It's fun, isn't it? It's fun. <laughs> it's really fun, fun. It? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What, what have people liked so far, I don't know, musically about Chibi? 8-Bit tunes. 8-Bit tunes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need more 8-Bit. We need more 8-Bit stuff. That's actually a, a buddy of ours named um, Connor Riley. He's really, really good. So we're going to have him do some more 8-Bit stuff, too, for sure. Cool. Yeah. What? Oh, it's up, Pete? Cool. Yeah. More Bossa Novas! Oh, yeah. <laughs> More Bossa Novas! <laughs> Do some Latin. All right. Um, we, we did a little bit of Latin, didn't we? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Ruby trap music. What? All right. Um, so basically what happens is we usually end up like starting questions way too late because I sit here kind of eh, doing this for too long. So why don't we start that earlier? Yeah. Because that's usually pretty fun. So I think we'll just get right into questions because we're, we're here to play tomorrow night is what we're doing. This weekend for us is about playing for you all tomorrow night and like uh, being really loud. Yep. So uh, let's just do questions and go yep. for it. Yes. All right, how do you want to do this? The, the They're going to ask questions, and we're going to answer. Yeah, but no, because they got a line in, a line in, a line in. Start one place for the next, start one place for the next. I mean, they're all... There are guardians, so... Got it. What do you think? Okay. Okay, let's do it. Let's start on the left. Left side. Stage left side. Hi! Hi. What's up? Hey. I'm great. How are you? Okay, so this is for everyone up there that this applies to or just wants to answer. Uh, what are your thoughts on the way music is taught, and what do you think is like the best way to teach it, or just a really good way? Um, can you hear him? Now, is there a monitor? Yeah, can we? Hey, Simon, we... is there a monitor that can put their their questions this direction at all? Yeah, get him some more some more volume. Get some decibels, please. We got a wicked flutter in the ceiling. Oh, it's there. Yeah, there's some monitors here. Can you just turn those up a bit? A wee bit. How it's taught? Uh, really? It's a question yeah, about music just, education? Okay, we're good. Wow, okay. you're a downer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did, didn't you see the No, YouTube? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. How music's taught? Well, I mean, I've been teaching my whole life, so I have a lot of thoughts about how music's taught. Uh, shit. Uh, I don't know. Do you have a direction? Like, I don't know. It's a huge topic, so any... Generally speaking... Yeah, just in general, like, you know, how, like, some people are a lot more strict uh, with music or, you know, some people are a lot more progressive and forward thinking. So, like, what do you think is, like, a really good way to get a lot of people involved or, you know, just spread music as wide as possible? All right, cool. I'll tell you what. I I'll just, I think I'll talk about, like, my personal music education since maybe, cool. I don't know, if it, in one way or another it sort of worked out. Um, okay. One thing I don't think people are, 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 uh, are um, inspired or asked enough to do is to listen to melodies of songs and learn those melodies and ingrain those melodies in your head and be able to just 
play along with melodies. I think that guitar players are too obsessed with playing the chords to things, right? And I think that they're too obsessed with, like, you know, wanking and playing solos, too, which is cool. That's all good. But when I was a kid, I played the melodies of things a lot, right? So I grew up in a really disco household, so it was all like Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson and like Donna Summer records. Oh, don't get it started. Babyface played last night at the W, uh, at the ACL. So like I spent a lot of time on like playing, like, like playing melodies, you know, like just playing along with songs, but not necessarily playing the chords, but playing the melodies, you know? Um, and I also, like my first instrument was organ which kind of was unusual, you know? Like, it was just what was in the house. We didn't have a piano, we had an organ. So, like, the stuff that I learned to play when I was really young was, like, goofy, like, tunes, you know? Like, Camp Town Racist, sing the song, do da, do da, right? Like, 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 goofy little me, like, go, 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 you know? <laughs> and, like, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle da, da, da. So, like, I was always playing melodies, you know? Like, melodies were, like, the constant part of, like, what I was doing. And I think that, like, that's just, like, as I started to write music and develop, like, I don't know. It's hard for me to talk about, like, well, what I do well. But I think that, like, after now, like, we've done this for a few years, and, like, what I think I'm doing right, sort of, is that, like, I kind of write, like, catchy melodies, you know, I guess. Um, and I think that's why. I think it's just because, like, for whatever reason, when I was a kid, I just played melodies a lot and played them along with songs. So I'd, I'd say, like, in a really basic way, like, you know, learning the melodies to songs and just being able to, like, put on the radio and play along with melodies. Uh, it just, you know, it teaches you about melodies. It teaches you about phrasing. Uh, and it applies to all instruments. So it doesn't matter whatever instrument you play or write for, you know, whether you're a singer or a guitar player or a keyboard player or a songwriter or whatever, you know. Even a drummer, like, like understanding, like, the, the, the way melodies are made and the way they're formed is, like, really, really super important. So, I don't know, I guess that's my little thing, because I'll talk about that forever, so thank you. That's a really cool question, actually. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. And it wasn't a downer at all. I was just goofing. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So, um... Step right up to the mic, because I'm, like, old and deaf, so... <laughs> Hello. Hi. So, uh, one of the things that I really noticed in your work is that you tend to translate one kind of theme song into several different styles. So something that I know noticed was like you were working on Grim Eclipse. How is working on a video game and translating the styles, you know, from Ruby the Show to Ruby Grim Eclipse to Ruby Chibi and, and still getting all those main melodies in there? How, how has it been? Um, I mean, you know, in a, in a certain way, it's kind of a nice thing to work with like these themes because <laughs> Sounds so bad. But it's like, if you don't have any better idea, you'd be like, well, I guess we could use that, <laughs> that theme melody. <laughs> you know, and then when you use it, people are like, oh, you're a fucking genius. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I couldn't come up with anything really better or new. <laughs> or I would like wait until it was due and like spent five minutes on it. So, um, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's a fun thing. You know, again, it's kind of like taking like, the idea of like being able to take a song and dress it up in different ways, you know, like whether you're taking like originally a super sort of serious song, like the like the melodies of like like Mirror Mirror or something like that, you know, and trying to like bring that to a different place and like use it in a more upbeat or energetic way. So I guess it's it's almost like the Ruby Chibi music in a way, you know, where it's just kind of fun for musicians to like, like we do it all the time just screwing around, you know, it's like you play the serious song. We were just doing it in rehearsals. We were just, we were just doing like, you know, goofy like Latin or Bossa Nova versions or whatnot of or reggae versions of different songs. So, you know, I guess it's like you're just trying to get like, you know, when you really do have a melody that works well and like some chords and stuff that work well and you, you're just trying to get the most out of it and really kind of, um, you know, um, get the miles out of it and, and really try to like, I guess like get it to apply to the, the characters, different moods and um, like progressions in their, in their character development, you know, um, trying to find ways to like take the things and blend them together and, you know, and then sometimes it's just like fun, you know, like Blake. So like every time Blake fights, it's like these piano arpeggios, you know, and, uh, it's kind of predictable in a way, but it's still fun. I'm still going to keep doing it. Um, 
And it's like, that wasn't a plan, you know? It was just like, oh, in the, you know, in the first you know, trailer, there was this kind of piano-y music. And it just kind of was like, oh, yeah, let's just keep that going. So it kind of just works itself into this kind of um, theme. So I don't know. I guess it's just a fun, goofy thing to, that we you know, play around with. You know? It's just like a toy. But yeah, cool. Thank you. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Great. <laughs> Okay. Oh, <laughs> anyway, you know, anyway. it's all right. <laughs> cool. um, so um, I'm sure you guys were probably expecting this question, um, but uh, now that the Ruby Volume 3 soundtrack is out and uh, you guys made the Mirror Mirror Part 2 song, and since uh, um, Volume 1 had Red Like Roses Part 2, uh, I was wondering if you guys had any plans for making a From Shadows Part 2 or I Burn Part 2, because I'm sure that's probably on a lot of people's minds now that this sort of pattern has come out. What do you think? You want to try to answer? Me? I can't answer either. Yeah. Neither of us can answer that. But uh, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Never! I mean, we didn't plan for it at first. It kind of just happens. It depends on what's happening with the story. Yeah, it really does. I mean, the Red Like Roses Part 2 thing, that was because... Uh, I feel like I talked about this before, but oh, whatever. I don't remember. Um, you know, it was the Red Light Roses Part Two was because there was a line in the original uh, Red trailer. I mean, I didn't know what was no, we didn't know what was going on then. I mean, that was so random. Like the Red trailer was like, we just finished this huge Red versus Blue thing, and it was like, oh, here's this new show, and it's like, oh, am I gonna work on that too? Oh, okay, cool. I had no idea what we were doing. It was very vague, you know. I mean, later on, me and, you know, we would get together with Monty and he would, like, give us this incredible amount of information. But at first I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't know what we were doing or talking about. I had no idea. It's just like, here's this video. And it's like, why is she killing these dogs? What is... <laughs> this, is a, this is a show about a psycho fucking kid slicing up dogs? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I want to work on this, man. This is nasty. Like, I was, I was in that really dark, like, I was in that goth phase where I was like, yes! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> and I'm just like, no! <laughs> Save the dogs! <laughs> um, anyway, so Monty was like, no, it's this thing. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so, anyway, okay, I'm trying to think now. Um, okay, so what does it say? Red like roses. Fills my dreams. That's why. Is that why? Right, okay, right, so it was, that, it was that line. Red like roses fills my dreams. All oh, right, and takes me to the place you rest. <laughs> Which, that was funny, too, because I was just like, well, all right, she's at a, a grave, so okay. I'm like, Monty, who's in the grave? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, really? He's like, I'm like, so what? He's like, I don't know, I just thought it would be cool if she visited the grave. I'm like, you're fucking with me. He's like, I'm like, what if it's your mom? He's like, I. <laughs> that's cool. I was like, wow, all right, cool. So that's your mom. All right, cool. Why not? <laughs> so, so, so that part of it, but like, Red Like Roses fills my dreams. Like, it always bothered me that I didn't know why I said that line or why we came up with that line at all. So I was kind of like always thinking about that. Like, why does Red Like Roses, like, what does that mean? Red like roses fills her dreams. Okay, so red fills her dreams. Like what fills her dreams that's red? It's like, you know, like cranberry sauce, like, mm, <laughs> like possibly, you know, like Kool-Aid, Bloody Marys. Kool <laughs> Who knows? It could be many things. Um, but then I was like, I was like, yeah, no, it's blood because that's way more epic than, than cranberry sauce as much as that was maybe tastier. <laughs> It's clear. And so then it was like, okay, but then why? You know? So the Red Like Roses thing was really me trying to like work that out and like figure out like why I ever said that and that it, you know, kind of connect those pieces together. So that was that. And then, and then Mirror Mirror Part 2, it's funny because the answer I want to give about From Shadows is that song's way too fucked up to try to like do anything <laughs> with. <laughs> Because it's really like, man, that song is like you move one thing out and the whole thing collapses, right? <laughs> that just happened in a rehearsal, <laughs> actually. But you can be there in my night and see if we can pull it off. Anyway, uh, 
intruder alert. Identified. Yeah, the intruder alert part didn't play. We were like, now what? The robot. I didn't think we could do a mirror, mirror part two because that song was equally kind of weird. Like, it's not a really normal song, you know? But then as, like, you know, basically as, as Weiss's character kept developing the way it was going and, um, and really the song, like, It's My Turn was the, th was the thing. So the, the It's My Turn song was really about Weiss really kind of being like, I had it with your shit, you know? <laughs> like, listen, Dad, fuck you. So... Yeah, it's like three minutes of, listen, Dad, fuck you. <laughs> you got to write a song about something. So, <laughs> so it was that song. And then the Mirror, Mirror Part 2 thing was because I actually, <laughs> truth, this goes back to the other question before. Like, I really liked those chords, and I thought they were really good. And I was like, it would be cool if I could get more out of these chords than one song. So I went back, and like that, the, if you kind of listen to it closely, the, the chords in um, Mirror, Mirror Part 2 are kind of um, stolen from the It's My Turn song. So yeah, it worked out that, um, it worked out there. Um, so from Shadows Part 3, who knows? I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. So never say never, but maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. I don't know. Which side are we on? <laughs> you keeping track? All right. Got you Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, <laughs> speaking about It's My Turn, uh, I love that song a lot. Uh, I was wondering... Casey likes that song a lot. I like it. It's good. <laughs> I was wondering, in the episode version, it's a bit different from the one that's on the soundtrack. So I was wondering if you could talk about, like, what decision was made to, like, oh, we're going to change up the arrangement. Yeah, yeah, it's always weird. <laughs> one thing that, like, I, I don't know if people understand is that um, when, when you hear something that's in the episode and it's kind of, it feels like, like I'm just taking little sections out of a five-minute song that exists and I'm just giving you this two minutes... That's not the case at all. Like, if you hear two minutes, that's all I have. Yep. <laughs> no shit. It's true. I mean, yeah. people are like, oh, why don't they just release the songs earlier? Because yeah, I know. They're just like, just give it to us. You're making us wait. You want us to spend more money later. I'm like, no, actually, what I really want is for you to not buy it twice, and I want you to just wait and get the full thing. And if I had it, I would give it to you, I swear to God. Yeah. But, but yeah, so what happens is, like, the thing that fits in the show is the thing that fits in the, the visual, you know, and that, that's a pretty weird thing, like trying to fit a song over an um, a action sequence. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty tricky, you know. Um, so, like, for example, um, it was a really hard thing, like, in, in It's My Turn, I had to put a bar, if you know music, there's like four, four, so it's like boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, one, two, three, four, one, right? So, like, most songs like that, right? Two, three, four. So when you're in five, you're like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So in like in the in the version that's in the um, the episode, there's like a couple of bars of five because it was just like Ugh, I, uh, the thing, and, right? So you're trying to match this thing. So you're like, hey, put an extra beat there. You just fuck with the tempo here, or whatever. Um, so then, like, when I do the song, I have to decide, like, is that just weird? Do I want to take it out? Is it, like, fuck the song up, or does it make the song better? So, like, I straightened out the bar of five, and now every single time I hear it, I'm like, well, I'm waiting for that bar of five, and it's not there. So, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a, a thing to rework the, the music that's in the show, in the video, to match up, uh, or to, to make a song that I feel like is a more sensible song. But... Um, but yeah, it's also a really interesting thing because I'm, I'm forced to um, commit to finishing these songs, <laughs> right? So like you hear it in the show, and I'm like, I have no idea what the rest of that song is going to be. And like, so I have, ten, at the end of the season, like I have 10 songs hanging over my head that are like, you know, a minute long, and I'm like, oh God, like I don't know how to finish all these necessarily. Sometimes I know, and other times I'm like, I have no idea. Um, but it's, a, it's good because it forces me to, like, put them out there and, and then finish them. Um, so, yeah, I hope that sort of answers whatever question you asked. Um, yo. Okay. Yo! Metal guy. Anyway, since you guys were talking about metal earlier, earlier uh, what would be your favorite metal band? And I'm asking all of you this. Our favorite Ooh. metal band? You got any metal over there, yo? I 
think we're starting on this side. Uh, do you want to? <laughs> you can start I'm down there because I have to think about perplexed. this. I have um, a lot of favorite metal bands. I don't. Not so much. Not so much. Not, not so, so much. Not so much. I like count as metal. Respect it. Don't have it on my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's not bumping in the ride when I'm, you know. We'll go to Adrian. I bet it's gonna be hard for Adrian because she's like got a million yeah. answers. Yeah. Adrian, what do you got? I mean, I like. I'm really into this band called Karach Angren right now. They're a symphonic black metal band from the Netherlands, <laughs> and they write about. Um, there's a an album. Lars, what's up? An album called uh, Death Came Through a Phantom Ship, and it's about a sailor who runs into the ghost ship and goes home and murders his family, and it's fucking awful, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Nightwish and Dimmu Borgir and, like, Pound Camelot. It. Pound it. <laughs> Air pound it. We'll talk later. <laughs> okay. Cool. Right side. Are you taking this? I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, we still have metal bands. Metal bands to, to talk. Um, I don't know if any of the bands that I, like, consider are considered metal, but well, yeah, Dillinger, Escape Plan type stuff like that, maybe Bosch. But but okay, hold on, let's let's have a cutoff here because anything I even count Miss Machine is okay, you know, as, as stuff like that. But calculating infinity, I think, was the height of their stuff. So there you go. <laughs> um, well, my dad did a pretty good job of teaching me about classic music. He started with the Beatles, which was kind of an obvious one. But <clears throat> he taught me a lot about classic rock. So, you know, every once in a while, we'll just, we'd just be driving in the car. You know, I'm like 10 years old. And, you know, like, say, a, a Van Halen song come on. He'd be like, who is this? And after a couple, either, you know, after, uh, usually it would take me a couple guesses, and then I'd get it right, or I would never guess, and he'd be like, Jesus, dude, like, how do you know that? <laughs> you suck, whose kid are you? So I kind of, I kind of just had to learn, and I did, so I did. You know, he'd, you know, be like, what is this song? And be like, and before he even finished, I'd be like, I'd just say the name, you know, I just, ACDC, you know, I mean, but, you know, some of them are a bit, a bit easier than others, but, so, I don't know if I have a particular favorite, um, you know, because that's kind of classic rock, I don't know if you'd, you know, classify that as metal, because, you know, there's so many genres and sub-genres now, but I know one that my dad and I both really like, um, or two, uh, one is Protest the Hero, we really like. <laughs> I was like, before the show, I was like, why aren't we doing Blood Meat? Like, that song is great. Like, yeah. It's really scary. Yeah, um, next concert, we're going to play Blood Meat. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one, and also, like, you know, don't yell at me, because I don't know if it's really, it's not really classified as metal, but it's a rock group that we both fell in love with a couple years ago that we love, and is kind of one of, at least was one of our influences for a time, Pierce the Veil is one of our favorites. That's all I got. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Casey brings all kinds of like different heavy rock over, and uh, I've actually done really well. Like I've, it was really hard for me, like the screamy stuff for a long time. Like I just, it wasn't my thing. I couldn't get into it. Um, but I finally learned to be able to, probably through Protest the Hero, just because I, I love their music so much, and I love the singer so much. And he does sing so well, but he can you know, scream a lot, too. Um, so between Pierce the Veil and Protest the Hero, I, I got better at being able to listen to, like, ah, more screaming, you know? I don't know, like, metal to me is like, is like, um... It's like Dio and uh, Iron Maiden, you know? I mean, you know, I'm old, so, like, like to me, like, it was that, you know, when I was a kid, it was like, you know, metal was a lot different than what metal is now. And I think to me that, like, one thing that changed a lot is that um, I feel like things got very serious. Uh, not so much, like, the lyric content or the way people dressed or, like, the vibe that it was trying to put up, but there was something about the music that got very serious to me in like newer metal that like makes me not drawn to it um like 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 i can hear like something like like um is nightwish metal i don't know like that right and i can listen to it and i can be like oh that's so cool but like i would never listen to it like it's too serious for me like i i feel like it's serious and i feel like there isn't that like 
afraid like of going little, dark? Little, like, we're only kidding part of it. It's like, no, we're fucking serious about this all the time. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, Iron Maiden to me was like, ah, they're kind of kidding around, you know? Um, anyway, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I was a little more like rock guy than metal guy. I was more like Ozzy Osbourne, Van Halen kind of shit when I was when I was growing up, and Randy Rhodes, and uh, yeah, Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen and shit like that was like all I thought about when I was a kid. So, yeah, cool. cool. That's still all I think. Over about. there, hi. Howdy. Uh, so do you uh, find it easy or difficult to deal with such a wide range of styles? Like, do you have a deadline looming over your head and you need to crank out a wings, but you really want to belt out an eye burn, which is my favorite? So, uh, I mean, it's writing or singing it, really. So what's the real question? What was the question? So, <laughs> I'm not really sure. So you're fine, you're asking, is, it, is it easy or difficult to deal with such a wide range of styles and music? It, Oh, right, uh, oh. Is it easier or difficult to deal with a wide range of stuff? Oh, oh, oh. That's his choice. Like, you're trying to write one song and then you Yeah, right, okay, no, another. okay, good, good. Um, no, I could never do a record with like 10 songs that like the same thing. Like I just couldn't do it. I'd be so bored. I would just, I would quit. <laughs> I, I would, I would quit. I wouldn't be able to do it. Like it's not my thing to like stay with the same music. Like I'm lucky to be able to finish one song like... I don't even know if I finish one song and keep it in one style, generally. I kind of bounce around. Bouncing around is like, yeah, it's just like... So working for Rooster Teeth has just been incredible because they've just let me run around like crazy and, and do all kinds of different stuff. Um, and that really, really suits me, you know, to be able to do boop on the same record as um, Sacrifice is like a real blessing to me, you know, and that's like... Where, like where I live, it, where, where, where I live is like a little bit in all of those places, you know. Um, so it's like you know, it's like the Bee Gees, and then Protest the Hero, you know, and and then Bobby Bartok, Brown. and then Bobby Brown, <laughs> right? So it's like for me, that's like the the where I'm comfortable. So jumping around music styles is like is what I need actually. So yeah. yeah, please don't quit. Cool, cool. Thank you. Hello. Hey, so a few questions ago, you said you gave Monty the idea that Ruby was visiting, visiting her mom's grave, so you killed Silver? What? What? I killed Silver? Oh. No, I just suggested it. Yeah. Ah. We, he suggested that she die. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I suggested? The, uh, the daggers on the stilettos on those two girls that, that are at work for that guy. I was like, dude, can they have, like, daggers on their stiletto boots? He was like, that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, I... So I invented that, or I suggested that. So I don't know. I, I, he, Monty, let me suggest things, you know? And, like, I, I mean, there were a million things that I don't even remember. He was probably like, no, that's stupid. And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But, you know, I'll tout, my, I'll tout my successes, of course, you know? Right. So, um... Um, I don't know. My kid's still with us, so I suppose it's not so much children killing. Was this about children killing, the question? No, it was, it was, he claimed that oh, you killed her. Oh, killing the mother, her. killing the mother. He claimed that yeah. you killed her. So oh, you yeah, no, I, anyway, so I suggested it, <laughs> and, it and he went for it. So. Uh, the real question I had, though, was with Ruby going in, like, the darker tone and now having uh, Adrian, um, I got the name right? Yep. Uh, Adrian, uh, with you, like, can we expect more like heavy uh, songs and like metal songs on Ruby? And like, what's it like, like dealing with those too. songs? <laughs> oh, 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 oh! You like? <laughs> Explained. I, I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I haven't seen the script. I, I'm not really. I'm not too sure exactly what's going to go on. Um, I'll tell you what was funny was that... <laughs> well, we have a lot to talk about, actually, still. We should, talk, we should talk about the whole, like, Ruby Volume 3 thing, and there's a lot we should talk about of that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was like, yeah, man, so... I mean, I, I've known for a long time what was going to happen in, in Volume 3, because that was a plan... 
That was part of a long range plan that uh, we talked about for years previous, if you know what I mean. Um, so I knew it was going to happen. I knew people were going to die, and I knew Yang was losing her arm, and I knew all the shit was going to go on. And, um, and I knew what I had to write for the theme song, you know? Uh, and when I did, I know it was different sounding than what we had done before, you know? And uh, it was tough, honestly, because the initial reaction to the new theme song was like, I don't like this. Yeah, no one liked it. There was a lot of, like, n not really great reaction to the song, you know? Originally, I mean, you can say, like, no, wait, no, we liked it. I don't know those YouTube comments. I don't know. There's, <laughs> At first, it was They just... stay forever, you know? Um, so there was... Uh, and that kind of was rough, you know? I mean, because uh, I been, had been lucky before that because it was like, oh, we fucking love everything you do, Jeff. And I was like, oh, they love everything I do. Look, it's so great, I can't fail. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, the song was more, ang it was more angry. It was more dark. It was more angular sounding. Yeah. Um, it had me screaming on it, which I didn't really, I wasn't so sure about. Um, but I knew what was going to happen, you know? And you didn't. So... <laughs> <laughs> So it was funny because, you know, then like as time goes by, now you go back and you look at YouTube and they're like, he fucking said it in the beginning. He told us. And I'm like, I fucking told you. <laughs> <laughs> I try to warn you motherfuckers and no one listened. They're like, he must just be pissed off about something. You know, yeah. his girl dumped him. I don't know what his issue is, but... I mean, Time to Say Goodbye is like a really pretty dark song, but it did just kind of gradually just go down. And I, since Time to Say Goodbye didn't necessarily sound that bad, and the, and the you know, the, uh, what is it? Like the open, like the footage, you know, the opening, it doesn't seem super, super bad. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be that bad. And then, you know, we kind of just, like the tone? yeah, the tone didn't seem very, very dark. Very dark. And then, well, you it's kind of like Time to Say Goodbye to Our Youth, which yeah. is like, ah, you know, that's a little sad, but it's all right. Now it's like Time to Say Goodbye to My Arm. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know what's coming up. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Hey. What's up? So. Good. So. It's good. Well. <laughs> <laughs> What were your three favorite songs to write for Ruby and why? What? Three what favorite you songs in uh, Ruby? Did you say three favorite songs? To write. Yes. To write. Yes. To write. Uh, your favorite to write. That's a you question. <laughs> um, in order? I don't know. I don't know because you want to know people always ask that and I was always like, well, it's like picking your favorite child and you can't really blah, 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 blah. And people don't want to hear that. You know? So I gave that answer for a long time and then I was just like, Boop. <laughs> so, I, just, I just go with boop now, you know? I just go with boop. I don't know. I mean, they're all kind of, I don't know, like fun in different ways, I suppose. Um, I don't know. To me, they're cool because I get to, um, I get to do different things with, with the people that I work with. And like, to, for someone who writes songs and produces music and, it's like to, to, to see it grow out of just some like idea into a thing that's done and see that you're able to bring your friends and your family and the people that you work with to somewhere new. Um, you know, they're all different in different ways, you know. Um, you, know uh, you know, like It's My Turn is cool because it's just different and it has like very different types of chords and like jazzy kind of chords in it. So you know, that was kind of cool and kind of unexpected. And, um, you know, like Divide was a cool song because it's kind of got this unusual form where it's like, um, the chorus I guess once. that's the chorus. Right. And it only happens once. And that's kind of different. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> so, I mean, they're just like different in different ways. But I don't know. I mean, there's another really cool one. 
that honestly is one of my favorites, which goes along with uh, you know trying out different styles, which was the Ruby versus Funky music. Like, you know, it was you know he came and he was like you know so there's maybe some scat singing going on, and I was like what? <laughs> I've never scat sang in my life. And then you know he had me a little bit educated. I went back and I did some research. I looked at scat singing, and I was like. Damn, it's Should we really tell the scat singing story? Sure. <laughs> so, so she was going to do a little scat singing, right? And I, I sent her a bunch of different stuff, you know, to listen to and check out. Yeah. And then we sat down, we started like, working on it together. And, you know, it wasn't like what she was doing wasn't like right at scat singing, so you just do whatever. But I think, um, I think the one thing was that I was like, I oh, kind of like stuck on like a few syllables. Yeah, like right? I, was, I would be stuck on the syllable like B, like Ba 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 ba, and like that would be it. And he'd be like, "You can't like that's good, but you gotta you know so listen, figure out some more." So concepts. then I remembered. I was like, "Wait!" So I was like, "I remembered the Sesame Street episode." <laughs> oh God! Where, is his name Hoot? The owl. So there's a jazz owl, and he plays saxophone, right? And there's an episode where he teaches Gordon. And like little kids to scat sing. He's like, now you go after me. <laughs> right? And he's like, scat do da da boop ba. And like all the kids go, scat booby da ba da. We actually sat there and like watched he, it. We're he made me there going, sit there and watch it after I was like, God damn it, I can't say any other But it was songs. awesome. <laughs> and, well, you, you were like, yeah. And I was sitting there like, I'm so embarrassed. No, but it was great. It's still great. It's still educational. No, I mean, you know? it was, I mean, Sesame Street's obviously like the best. But I was just sitting there like, I really have to. I really can't do it. I have to. I, Sesame Street is my savior. Right now. Yeah, but I don't know. See, to me, that's the, like normal. I'm like, I don't. I'll watch Sesame Street to steal shit. Like, I, <laughs> Sesame Street had great music like all my life. There was great things going on at Sesame Street, you know. So, uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know if I answered your question, but we, we talked about it for a while. <laughs> thank you. Thank no. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Well, people keep stealing questions I was going to ask, so it's, here's a new one. Um, is there a particular character that you enjoy writing or singing for? Like, do you like Weiss's character that you make songs about or Ruby's character? Is this for me? Or for any of y'all? Yeah, I think it's for you. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I like, obviously, I like... Mo I mean, most of the characters are really interesting and really diverse, and it's always really cool just hearing the new themes that my dad comes up with for them. Like, you know, obviously caffeine was like, for coffee, uh, team <coughs> coffee was like, whoa, that's so awesome and different. Um, you know, and like I, you know, like I said earlier, Ruby versus Funky, the Funky thing was just like <coughs> unbelievable. I couldn't believe that we did something like that. Um, uh, and, like, I have a favorite character, but we don't necessarily... I mean, we have songs, maybe, that she's kind of, you know, <coughs> maybe sort of a part of, but not... not she doesn't have a theme yet, like, at least song-wise. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, well, my favorite character is Neo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed singing for every, every single character. Obviously, Weiss is a little bit more like, um, you know, obviously it was like, oh, we're putting out Mirror Mirror Part 2 shit. Like, that's pretty crazy because, you know, everyone was always kind of anticipating, you know, and it was, you know, when, we're, when I sing as her, it's, it's as her. And I remember when we, were, when we were doing that song, Mirror Mirror Part 2, uh, and I was trying to sing it in various different ways, and I was like, you know, I was kind of singing it in a very... I started off in more of a chill ballad kind of voice, like the way I would do, you know, wings or something like that. And it just wasn't sounding right to me. You know, he's like, I mean, yeah, this is good. And I was like, I don't know. It doesn't, it, it, I'm not feeling it. It doesn't feel like enough. And then I tried sort of a different way of um, singing it, which was a little bit more, I don't want to say whiny, but a little more of a desperate kind of a sound that was obviously just a little bit more emotional, and it seemed like it just it just felt better to me. So um, you know, it depends on the character. But if I if I have a favorite character to sing for, I'll definitely like let you know when it comes out. But like I like singing <laughs> for everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Uh, hey. Hello. Um, oh. I'm like, Is that Penny? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi, Penny. Hi. Um, this is a question for everyone. Like, what's your favorite song that you've like worked on or listened to from Ruby? Like in general. Okay. Favorite Ruby song? Favorite Ruby song. We should we should have this right, down by now. <laughs> favorite Ruby song. Well, you would have three, right? You would have I Burn, mm -hmm. Caffeine, Caffeine, yeah. and uh, oh no, you didn't have one. You, you, we traded uh, this year. We gave you a Laser Team song instead of a Ruby That's song. Right. That's right. <laughs> I love Caff. I love what he does on Caffeine. That was just blew everything. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we got ten minutes. Yep. Holy yeah. crap! Yeah. All right, I like Caffeine. Um, I like what he did on Caffeine. There. That's my answer. Okay. Wait, was it for volume three or for just um, in general? Just Ruby in oh. general, like your in general. Song. I already said boop, so I said boop. Um, mm, uh, well, I have, I have a couple favorites, but I think, like, I'll, I'll just narrow it down to a couple. Um, I May Fall is always a timeless one. Um, oh, yeah, it's a good time. I just, I just couldn't, I'm, every time I, like, hear the very beginning of that song, you know, just the way that our, our voices sound together in that, in that beginning is just so interesting. Um, and then It's My Turn is, like, uh, just, like, such a jam. It's such a jam. Uh, and like, um, if you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard it, you know, if you've listened to any of volume three, but you know, the remixes that our friend James Landino does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I heard that remix, I just started dancing. I just like, I just started just going at it in the studio. I was like, yes, yes. Cause yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't heard it yet. And like I, everything he's done so far is so amazing. And I was like, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear this. And then he showed me and I just couldn't believe how like how beautiful it was and how different it was. It is actually kind of very similar sounding to a lot of the um, the sort of the genre that I'm into right now. So that was just really cool and exciting. So yeah. Cool. All right, let's try. We don't have too much time, so we're gonna like try to like go quickly through a few more questions. Yeah. Go. Um, hello. Uh, now that the um, volume four, it's just a few months down the road. I was wondering how is the sound chart going for volume four. Is that, is that, I think he just asked how the soundtrack is going for volume four. <laughs> Did you see a trailer? Did they show a trailer today? Yeah. All right, cool. That's how That's it's it. going. That's it. There's nothing else. Yep, exactly. That's it. <laughs> hey. Would you guys like to work with on the Ruby soundtrack? Like, any artist, go. Oh. Like, who would we like to work with oh. as a, uh, on a Ruby soundtrack? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, well, we always used to we always used to joke about like you know when we could, when I couldn't particularly or he couldn't particularly like sing the songs very well we'd just be like, God damn it, why don't we just have Haley Williams here or yeah. like or like Vic Fuentes from Pierce Veil or Kellen Quinn from Sleeping with Sirens? We're like, why don't we just have them here? Um, so I don't know, maybe them. I don't know. I could, I'd go on forever. Yeah, exactly. That. Same. Like, like, I mean, you know, it depends on what. Same with Davis Jr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Boring. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing. Sorry. Oh. It would be an endless list. Hi. Hey. Um, so, besides when the soundtrack's going to come out on Spotify for us people without Apple phones, um, Casey, what was it like to hit musical success at like 13? Or whatever it was. Oh, well, well, my life story. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I won't go on forever. Um, I'll just say simply that I mean, it's. I mean, this entire this entire thing has been the most humbling experience of my life. You know, I'm 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 just a high school kid. I'm just you know I'm just about to start my senior year. Finally, you know, I'm gonna be out. Thank God for that. But, um, but you know, it it has done so much good for me. You know, to be to you know be in middle school and like kind of hate everyone. You know, you're in that phase where you just feel you just feel really weird and you just hate everything. But then you know I had that to hold on to, and it was just such a cool thing that like. And I never you know I don't I don't really talk about it at school. I it's kind of just random. It's like. Every once in a while, I'll get a person that's like, oh, you do this thing? Oh, that's really cool. Or someone, you know, that I never really talked to that came, you know, from, like, elementary school, and they'll be like, dude, I didn't even know that was you. I've been watching that show for, like, you know, months, and I had no idea, you know? And it's just very, it's very cool, and it's very interesting. So 
it does just, I just feel, like I said again, just so humbled and I have been so incredibly lucky and you know, a lot of this is just about the connections that we have and um, you know, about my dad. You just, make me cry, motherfucker. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look at it, it's welling up. <laughs> motherfucker, come Don't on. Don't let it, just slap yourself. All right. Um, <laughs> Sweaty, it's humid. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I mean, like... Goddamn Texas. Not to, <laughs> not to get the emotions rolling, but, like, it is because of him that I, that I get this opportunity. And, you know, we're going to be a working partnership for a very long time, at least until he gets so sick of it that he's going to retire. But... Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love this kid. I'm just going to say, you didn't so much ask me, but I'm just going to say, I'm just, uh, I mean, obviously, what she just said, I just, I mean, to do this with her and have our relationship be so great that the music has given us a whole awesome way to be um, together and, and bonded and everything is amazing. But I'm really, like, to me, it's like, I meet all you people. I mean, I, and I'm not like, I don't kiss ass. You ever seen me kiss ass? Fuck no. No fucking way. I just we, don't. That's just we, not my way. We, we couldn't be friends if you did. It's man. just not my way, you know. And like, but like, honestly, like, to just to come here once a year and like meet all you and like just have like nice chat with you and smile with you is just just awesome. So absolutely. absolutely. So that's something that we're just without a doubt. Yep. Yep, yep. Three minutes. Oh, shit. I have one thing I want to talk about. I'm sorry. But, I mean, we'll see when we get one more question. But I kind of want to say something. Um, I want to actually just, like, a little quickly. Um, like I said. Uh, yeah, no, really quick, right? Um, the, the Ruby Volume 3 was, was very much the way it had been planned for a long time. I spent a lot of time with Monty looking at a lot of like scripts and a lot of ideas and a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, I didn't mean to go that way with it, actually. Um, <laughs> we were all robbed. Yeah, uh, we were all we were all robbed, but but look, like I was just saying, like I don't work for Rooster Teeth, right? Like they're not my employer. I do music for them, and I love doing music for them, and I have for a long time, and uh, I want to keep doing it. But I don't kiss their ass, and they don't kiss mine, and I never say nothing that ain't the truth because it's just I don't need to. So, um, you know. Um, the reason I worked on Ruby Volume 3 is because I thought it was the right thing to do. Right? I didn't have a contract that forced me to do it. I didn't, have, I didn't need the money. I didn't need the work. You know? I went to Matt and I said, I don't know if I'm going to do it, man. Like, straight up. I don't know if I'm going to do it. What I have with Rooster Teeth is my bond with and my trust with Matt Hullum that I've had since the absolute beginning. And I trust that guy and I don't trust like more than five people and I trust him right I could screw him anytime he could screw me anytime and we don't um what no what oh we have gay sex <laughs> I think when you see us together, it's pretty obvious. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> mm. Where was this going? Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know anymore. Um, <laughs> I mean, it got to the right place, but where was it? Here's, here's the point. I worked on Ruby Volume 3 because they convinced me it was going to be the right thing to do, and it was going to be the show that I talked about with Monty for a long time. So uh, there's a lot of shit and division and words that were typed. Um, 
And um, I don't know. I think that, that you all need to hear some different perspectives, and I think my perspective is very important there. And um, the reason I worked on the show is because I felt it was the right thing to do, you know? Uh, Led Zeppelin didn't keep playing after John Bonham died because they thought it wasn't the right thing to do. ACDC kept playing after Bon Scott died because they thought it was the right thing to do, right? Those are two different choices, and both of those people, groups of people thought this was the right thing to do. I didn't know if it was the right thing to do at first to work on Ruby Volume 3 because I wasn't sure. So I needed to find out. Once I found out, I was like, I think this is right. I think this is what Monty had in mind. I think this is cool, and I'm going to do it. Right. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that. You guys? All right, we need to be done. I'm sorry we didn't get to answer all your questions, but I'm really glad that we got to answer a lot more today than we usually do. Yeah. Um, if we seem unprepared for this panel, it's because we're really prepared for tomorrow night. So I swear to God, if you, if you can make it over to the ACL tomorrow night, um, use your it. coupon code, save yourself a little couple dollars. It's going to be a really, really fun show, and we're going to turn it on. Big time. Everything that we didn't have prepared today, we have prepared for you tomorrow. I hope to see you then. And thank you so much because everything you. that you do for us is really great. Every single one of you for great. coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We love you all. <laughs>